So if this whole setup seemed a bit convoluted and tricky and tough to understand, the good news is that SideFX has already created a much simpler way to prepare assets than going through this entire setup. And it's called the Component Builder. We're going to take a look at how to do this with the Component Builder right now. So if we put down a Component Builder, we get a bunch of nodes here. Um, I'm not going to go and really explain too much about the Component Builder. There are some really good tutorials out there on the SideFX website published by SideFX that I really highly recommend taking a look at. It will go into much more depth than I'm going to go into here. What we will do though is start to fill this out. So we highlight this and we can see we've got something called asset, which is up at the top here. Once I go down here, it's relabeled into the node label here. Um, but basically it's taking an asset, a material library, putting them together and putting a material variance in here as well. So we'll go and I'm just going to copy our SOP out of there and go into our geometry node here, change this into external SOP and just paste that right in. And you can see our mech comes in right away. Now let's go and copy our materials here and we'll put them in the material library. Now this is automatically applied. That's via the component material uh, node here. I'm gonna change this so that it reflects what we had going on down here in our material assignments. For our primitives, we're going to do this and assign it to all the meshes and for the material path, make sure I have um, this selected here. I'm going to copy that path and paste it into here and make sure that's stuck. Maybe that didn't, let's find out here. I believe it has. Um, I'm going to set the variant name here as red. And then I'm going to copy and paste the same thing. This time we don't need that second input because this wires all the way through. So if I select this now, I can change um, that to, we'll say dirty green and our variant name will change to dirty green. And then this one will label side effects orange. Plug that right into there. And now we can set our default variant here. So I'm gonna go here and change it to red as our material variant. And now we see we've got that set. You can set it to whichever one you like the best. And if you don't like this being here, what that is, is class inheritance setup. Uh, it's recommended to keep it on unless you have a reason to turn it off. It doesn't really do much for you um, either way, unless you're getting into the more advanced parts of USD. If you're just doing basic stuff, it's not hurting you to keep it there. So I would typically just keep it. Uh, what we do need to do is change the name of this. So right now the root prim is set to our operator string, which is here. Let's make sure it's set appropriately. We'll call that mech. I'm just going to toggle our uh, display here to make sure that's still working. Okay. And you can see that it will have a place to save all of these things onto disk here. Uh, there's a whole bunch of export options where you can see exactly what's being saved. It's going to save the materials in the material um, folder here. It's going to save the geometry layer here in the geo layer, and it'll give you a payload, which is like um, a very stand-in bounding box, which you can enable or disable uh, or 
if you don't want to see all your geo in the scene. Uh, anything extra can go into an extra layer. And then if you want, it will actually copy all your textures into a local file, a uh, local directory um, that is relative to where this asset is stored and it will repath everything. If we want to turn that off for now, we'll disable that. Uh, I would recommend turning it on if you would like your textures to be in a place that are um, stored with your asset. If that's already taken care of, you probably don't need to duplicate that. So this stuff is going to end up here. So it's going to be in hip USD assets, and then it will have the component name. I'm going to just change this and call it component builder. Just to show the difference when we write this to disk. So all we have to do now is press the render button here. which is right here. So I'm going to choose save to disk. Now it is saved to disk. We can load it from disk if we want. So you can see that this acts as a file cache. It's reading off of the disk, uh, in which case all of this stuff should be ignored. Or if we want to just reference that in, we can choose a reference or in this case, actually, what's even better is to go for the asset reference, choose our reference file, and here we're going to find the component builder asset that we just did. And we will grab the mech USD. Here's our mech. The reason that I'm using this is this already has the variant stuff in here. So I can do this and I can choose my variant set my material and I can already set whichever variant I want. So this is kind of nice because you don't need the extra set variant step in there. And there's a bunch of other nice options in here. It's built with a transform in here and a few other things that make it quite easy to work with. But you can see that this is working as it's meant to. Uh, again, the name here is coming from the destination primitive. So I can always change that back to mech if I want.